And they can have my things when we're dead But we gonna live forever It's Friday, guys day, buys day. Buy guys day? Mom shops at buy way. I remember, man, remember buy way? I do remember buy way. Got some member berries for buy This way. is the day my special releases Monday dropping. Do not let the bad guys win. My enemies. This one, there's one I got thing. enemies. Got a lot of enemies. enemies. And enemas. Fine. So everyone, you know, it's an interesting thing. So this is what someone posted. I was posting the special drop-in or whatever. If anything you could do for me, it's tell a friend and share it. Just this one thing. But the someone was uh, fucking quote tweeted it being like, Oh, dropping a special on YouTube is the equivalent of an author saying that I'm self-publishing a book. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. Like, they thought it was some big gotcha. A big gotcha. And you go... Yeah, it would be the equivalent of self-publishing a book if you had a million, a more than a million person uh, su subscriber list to your mailing list, which is what they do. Yeah, like if you of even James Altucher, all those guys are like, yeah. When you have a huge following, you're right. It doesn't make that much sense to sign with one of those places. No, it's like you have your own publishing house. You have your own publishing house, and more importantly. This, but what I was saying was, these people need to live in that world where you go, it's somehow better on Comedy Central. I was even just talking to Giannis, and he was like, they used to say, oh, drop your special on Comedy Central. That's a good good place to hide it if you don't want anyone to see <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, at this point it is. At all these places. And so, so first of all, they need people to think like that, that aren't paying attention to the industry the same way they do in every other sort of thing. They need to be like, oh... If these people say it's good, that's what, you know, not to mention the people that are actually doing fucking numbers, selling tickets. The biggest comics of all release their specials independently. But more importantly than all of that, I turned down three different places that offer me money. And the biggest one was a six figure offer Yeah, that I said no to because this seems like the move to put it out for free for the people to see. So... The people that are trapped. Why is a man of the people? Man of the people. And the people that are trapped in that old paradigm, I pity them. I feel sorry that you have to live. You're having a bit of a pity party on March 7th. <laughs> is that what you're saying? It's going to be a bit of a pity party for, like for this person? It's so crazy living in like the, you know, this person's big and be going, well, Jordan Peterson isn't that big because he wasn't on the, <laughs> I'm using his voice to talk to, uh, to make fun of him. Of him, But yeah. going like, well. It wasn't on the New York Times bestseller list. It's like, well, Vulture didn't do a piece on your special. <laughs> and you go, fuck the, the audacity to live still. And then on top of that, to have you have some snark. Like, eh. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. those is, are my enemies. That is your enemy. Well, I wonder what the most recent comedy special on Comedy Central that person has Do you seen. think any of them fucking touch Shane's or a Hell, fucking Schultz's or Mark Hell no. no. They put them, yeah, they, these people are living in no. a, a fucking I mean, world. So stick it to my are, enemies. People are slow to change. You know, people are slow to change their, their thinking. That's being generous. They yeah. are, I would say the reason is they need this paradigm so they can feel cozy. Yeah. So they don't feel like the fucking world's taking off without them. And yeah. they're being left in the dust. I mean, if you ask my mom, you go, where's the best place to have a comedy? She'd be like, I don't know, Comedy Central. Yeah, bedroom that with your dad. <laughs> it's fucking a nonstop hey, laugh. Zingers. <laughs> you fucking take the pantaloons off. <laughs> It's funny. Just even watch what's going on on Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. And we know some people that work there, but it's funny to watch, you know, them, you know, recently they're doing a sketch about uh, COVID. And the idea was we kind of realized like some of this stuff doesn't work, but no one wants to say it. Yeah. And, and then on the same week, they did another sketch about, you know, uh, white men podcasting and yep. the fake podcast. I just watched that earlier. Yeah. Today. And whatever. Do whatever you want. But it's like. Okay, but also you're like these stupid white men and their opinions. And it was like, and then two years later, you're kind of like, okay, all those podcasters yeah. were right. And all of the things we've it's, been telling them they were wrong about everyone on the internet. We've been making sketches for two years and I don't mean them specifically. And it's more about just these machines are fucking three years late. Yeah. And w the whole time before their, their attitude is, can you believe me fucking morons? Yeah, it's like you're in the bomb shelter after the fake bomb scare. You go, it's safe <laughs> to come out now, guys. 
Yeah. Safe to come out now. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> there was no bomb, and then they come out, and then they go. They go. They're, they're all bleary eyed, being like. Right. And you go. You're not going to address the fact that you spent the last two years uh, <laughs> fucking demonizing people that said the bomb wasn't happening. And then they're like, Yeah. But there's a war in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Literally the last you're going to hear of fucking, as long as if this is like, a, uh, this war has some teeth. Yeah. You ain't going to be hearing much about COVID from SNL for, <laughs> <laughs> or anybody for that matter. Well, we were, uh, we're going to go through, you know, and people, people said it couldn't be done. Make the COVID, make the Ukraine Russia thing funny. People mm-hmm. said it couldn't be done. <laughs> But before that, probably the funniest thing that me and Danny went to the Raptors game when they played in Brooklyn. Oh my god! And then because it relates to the COVID thing, so the first thing is the Kyrie Irving thing. They there was an article in the New York Times that goes, um, "It's probably time to let Kyrie Irving play, even if it's annoying to us." Yeah. And the whole thing was it, it, they're really saying the quiet part out loud. There's a bunch of parts of the article that go yes i know i don't listen we don't want i don't want to see people like that get their way as much as you do (laughs) you know for example the tennis player that said he wouldn't play and now we're just gonna let him play even though it makes sense like uh, i guess we have to and it was just i mean it's it is kind of like human behavior at at play here though you know like in elementary school it's the kid who followed the rules and then someone like broke a rule that doesn't affect them in any way and they could let it slide That's a good way. But they don't want to, you know? It's just like, they're like, no, I followed the rules. Yeah. Therefore, you must follow the rules. This is... It's not about the rules. It's about the following of the rules. I've, I've always said that there's nothing that bothers people doing anything the traditional way more than someone that just fucking skipped the system. Yeah. I mean, more, but this is... That's even, why even married men, they go, you know, married men hate, like, a guy that's out there banging. He's like, you're not supposed to fucking it's do not, that. Yeah, it's not part of the deal. <laughs> but more importantly, with the Kyrie Irving thing, the sheer stupidity of it is you're like, okay, fine. You want to be the rule, but... If you're a, a, an opposing player and you come into New York and you're not vaccinated, you can play. But that's, that's the, the craziest. Absolutely insane. Is like part. there are a couple guys like Jonathan Isaac on Orlando who's like he's like he has like a show on like the Daily Wire like for real like okay like but he's on the Orlando Magic. He's just like he's a conservative Christian guy who plays in the NBA and he's just like I'm not getting vaccinated, but because he's in Orlando, they're like fine. But when he comes into fucking New York, he can play. It's only if sort of you, like when Westerners go, they don't have to potentially wear the hijab. Exactly. It's like if you go to Dubai or whatever, but you're from America, they go, like, yeah, yeah, we can have yeah, some yeah, drinks. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Right. Just don't fucking like have them when you live there or whatever. But yeah. And like the rule is they go, oh, it's fine. Cause that would be too much of, even though it wouldn't be that big of a deal because to not let Jonathan Isaac play or like the few NBA players who are unvaccinated, I don't know why that's that big of a deal. It's the equivalent of like those unvaccinated players can't go to Canada and play. Because Canada straight up said, look, the rule does apply to everybody. Regardless. Well, be- because but if New York, here, you would have to essentially admit that this didn't make a whole lot of sense and wasn't really helping anyone. But they did from the start with New York because they, from the beginning, <laughs> they go, players who play for a New York team unvaccinated can't play in New York. But if you don't play for an unvaccinated... Well, because it was theater, or, right? Yeah, it was... But yeah. it's just funny when it's theater and everyone kind of realizes it now and then um, they have to slowly roll it back and be like... And then out loud on words say, yeah, guys, we don't want to admit we're wrong, but we sort of like it's a little bit I mean, dude, the State of the Union last night, I don't know if you saw that, but it's, they, they were two days before it, they go, okay, we don't need masks anymore. And nobody was wearing a mask last night. Yeah, it's just all fucking switched. One, there was like one guy wearing a mask and everybody else. Well, we're all sort of wearing a mask. We're all, we're all wearing a figurative mask. But more important than that whole thing. So basically, the, <laughs> they did a, um, they did a, 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 what was it, a, a shot competition? This was by far because it was a shitty game. The Raptors the Nets Demo had no. Them. The Nets Nets had missing all three of their stars. It was like the, okay. the game was over in ten minutes, and then it was a halftime show, and they're doing some sort of a competition. Yeah, yeah. It's and just like you got to sync like the you shots sink from different baskets, spots, and this right? is ten year old black kid. Yeah, and he wins the competition. And he's like a real like he had like a diamond studded <laughs> earring. Like he was you know real like real swaggy swagged out kid. You know real like cool, cool kid. Gets the thing. gets it at the buzzer, at mind the you. Buzzer. He, he got the last shot at the buzzer, and they go, "You have won the big grand prize. Two tickets to." Sebastian Miniscalco. 
<laughs> I burst out laughing when they said that. Like, I literally burst out laughing. <laughs> they gave this 10 year old fucking basketball kid uh, tickets to the thing that 60 year old fucking mothers Italians like. And by like, the way, I love Sebastian Mendes. Yeah. Okay. But I'll tell you, doesn't like him or even probably know who he is. It'd be the equivalent no, of you go to the bingo like, hall and the big prize for the Italian, uh, you know, that it was like the soccer team yeah. and they have a parent's bingo <laughs> night and the big present is uh, that they win at the end of it. The grand prize is two tickets to Little Uzi <laughs> yeah. and 21 Savage. Yeah, and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Kids, just, Travis Scott tickets. <laughs> just giving just giving some 10-year-old te rapper kid from Brooklyn tickets to Ted Nugent. You know what's amazing, too? So the kid was really good at basketball, obviously. Yeah. He's young. He's at a Probably a Maniscalco fan, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, but he's at a basketball game. Just give him more basketball tickets. It's like you're <laughs> at the Nets game. Just give him more basketball tickets. They're cheaper, probably. They're probably well. They, I guess they had their allocation that they just have to give away. Dude, honestly, all I could think of at that moment when they give him away is Sebastian Maniscalco watching that, being like, "Aren't you embarrassed?" <laughs> they basically with the, that kid with Sebastian Maniscalco. Sebastian was like, "When when we were growing up, you remember <laughs> you used to have to go to the door. That kid's mom didn't even experience that." <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. He's talking to our mom. The kid straight up went. They gave him the tickets, and he just went and Googled Sebastian. And he probably like uh -huh. auto, like he he mangled it. Those are on StubHub before you could blink oh 100 percent. they were probably like he's like can i just get 20 bucks instead i'll just take 20 dollars <laughs> cash and also an there's a player called david duke which is hilarious. oh yeah that was another yeah there's a guy a black guy on the nets named david duke jr <laughs> well the david duke with the dunk boom <laughs> <laughs> so these are we're gonna go through the russia ukraine thing and these are i will say what i thought and i'm, I'm not gonna go out of out of the gates i'm not saying i am some political theory and world geopolitical expert. Mm -hmm. But I would say that I'm an expert in cultural trends, what people are up to, yep. propaganda to some degree. A lot of propaganda. And you have sort of an interesting take on this already because you actually are from the area. Yeah, oh, uh, my parents are, yeah. So Danny... Yeah, so Danny's My parents, parents are literally Russian people who are from Ukraine. But, but they're from Russian. The, but they're and, Russian. And they identify as Russian. They're of. Russian. They speak they don't well, my mom had to learn like she went to school when she was a kid, elementary school and stuff, and it was in Ukrainian, which she hated. It's the equivalent of if you went they were in Quebec and they say no French. Right. We're doing it all so in English. So she her and first go, no, language is Russian. Yeah. And then they forced her to speak Ukraine. Ukrainian, yeah, and school, Ukrainian school, Ukraine, Ukrainian, I Ukrainian. believe it's called. Um, yeah, Ukrainian, and they had to like uh, go to school in Ukrainian. You know, if you do any tests, it's all. In so, that. what's her take on this whole thing as a native? They hate Putin. They're not any sort of pro Putin. They they don't like Russia, they but they're fr they they're, consider they're themselves from Russia, but they don't. They're like Russian. Putin. Yeah, they don't like Putin. They don't like Russia as a country particularly. That's why they left the moment they had an opportunity to. Uh, I would say that you know they they understand Russia where they're coming from in the context of the whole historical thing of you know like. They they don't ever they need that buffer of Ukraine yeah. in the event that the West ever tries to take them out. And they kind of said at some point um, after World War II that they would never fight another battle on Russian soil. And in order to keep that going, they need that stronghold of Ukraine to have that buffer so that if they're ever attacked, they're, we're going to fight it in Ukraine. You can attack us. We'll fight you in Ukraine. And if you take us out there then i guess it'll move but like a book game of risk it's like it, it is actually yeah. risk yeah well i remember th this is the thing that is kind of with all that stuff very everyone has you know not everyone but most people have such a tiny view of what's happening in all cases right whether that be like music fucking cult anything right yeah so they look at this and they go well this is the you know the bad guy here or whatever right and you're like well it depends how far back you go because it's always you can go well they did this and you go well they did this because of this and they did this because of this it's almost like watching a a couple that's fighting non-stop every time you go out they have a fight and then you're kind of everyone's watching and they're the thing and they go you know, that was why, why that guy gets so mad at her over that little thing. And you go, it's a whole 200 yeah, year yeah, fucking totally. thing. It's just something she did in uh, 1989 that pissed him <laughs> off. And he's never forgotten it. Yeah. 
So if you look at kind of the whole extended thing, um, it really is, this is what you would say the probably everyone's up to is it seems like there is that thing where you go, whenever CNN and Fox are in agreement, you go, always be wary of that. And the, well, whenever it comes to war, the, 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 it's almost like, you know, and someone pointed this out, but the when everyone was really fighting in America for the last long time, mm -hmm. there wasn't any new wars during that period because the bipartisan consensuses are always the scariest ones. Yeah. Uh, th this one is kind of an interesting one because especially... First off, th there is a real like social media. This is the first war yeah, the first ever. War that's being fought that, on that, social media. That, you know, they have. There's each side has like a social media arm. Those are the and real. And they have soldiers. a million. Yeah, and they have a million bots on both sides. Ukraine's definitely winning the war on social media. But if you talk to anybody who actually knows what's going on, they're like, "Yeah, Ukraine's fucked." Like they're not winning. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they're winning the hearts of America, right? You know, and that's the kind of like united front is that. It's hard for somebody to really take Putin's side right now, right? But they but they want to sort of blur the lines of uh, wh whose side you're on and what who do you think's right and wrong? Because and then they want you to now the the blur that in with should America fight a war? Well, on the that, that's of, the of big Ukraine. And, and you know and NATO and NATO and it sounds. Well, the, basically, you have the fucking neocons, neoliberals all sort of agree that, like, fucking beating the war drums, right? Yeah. Media is mostly doing their bidding. Although Biden you has have, said nonstop, he's saying we're not sending troops over there. Well, we're not, but you get nukes into the equation. Yeah. And then you force the hand, and that's it. Yeah. You don't want to sound like some fucking hippie pussy either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's straight up saying he knows how that, because again, Biden is kind of, uh, you know, he's a Democrat, but he's. People say he's, you know, kind of a Republican too. He's he 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 does not. Uh, he could change his tune, but for now, he's saying we're not going. And then but, there's the fucking. I would say like the uh, the kind of internet right that is almost Trump people that you would they, they hate America. They like fucking kind of hate Western America bullshit so much that now they love Russia. They love Russia. Yeah, it's, it's like just, almost it's tongue trolling. in cheek love Troll, Russia. Trolling, yeah, some like of them boy, for Patrick. real. Yeah, but we. I would say some people legit do say like. You know, fucking, I'll tell you what, you're, they're not arguing about trans bathrooms in Russia or whatever, yeah, right? absolutely. And yeah, yeah. and then you'd have fucking like probably the, the, the fucking, person. you know, uh, the dirtbag left sort of, li and then libertarian sort of non-interventionist type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Which they're sort of, I would say that take is more that, you know, that you want to have a good guy and a bad guy here, but it's like, there is two bad guys, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I don't know if really Zelensky's the bad guy, but well, he's definitely... A, a like I said, winning that social media war. No, 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 no. So they, uh, I would say their argument wouldn't be that he's necessarily the bad guy. Is that you know, if you look far enough back, they they went into Ukraine and basically took out the Democratic person oh, yeah, and absolutely. put this person yeah, yeah. there and blah blah. But blah, it was blah. yeah, it was super corrupt. And then because it used to be a Russian, uh, uh, like the leader of Ukraine before Zelensky was a Russian puppet. Pretty funny that he's a comedian, right? Not only is he a comedian, he got a show that he, Imagine Rick Rowley he won. Was, <laughs> he like had a viral video or something, and then became yeah, the president. He was being the president, too. And then, being the president. Had That's a, like if a fucking Kyle Dunnigan just like we get to be the president, kind of, <laughs> and then he does become the president. Or the Sarah Cooper was there, did the Trump impressions, and they yeah. go, you know what? What if you well, just yeah, did what if it? You just became the president, but well, Quebec basically came out. So the internet stuff's been incredible. Quebec said that they dropped poutine from the menu. Insane. <laughs> that was fucking insane because they say putin <laughs> they say putin why don't you just say it like the thing is they hate english people so much that if the alternative was hey why don't you say it like the rest of us like, oh, we'd idiots. rather die we say poutine and they go yeah we'll just not eat it we'll just not eat it <laughs> they hate they they yeah that's you know they also said no walking slow ever you know no or no walking fast no one's allowed to be rushing <laughs> no, yeah, no rushing <laughs> no rushing you have to be always anyone everyone at all times for the good of Ukraine is going to be walking at a very slow pace because there's going to be no rushing happening in Quebec. These things are, first of all, most people's is publicity stunts, like the sanctions, the banning of, you know, the stores coming out. And there's like some small bar and go, yeah, yeah, I just want to say that I won't be selling Russian beer. And you're like, okay, so most bars, That's you go, insane. okay, so you had one bottle of Russian vodka and you just go, you know what, I'll take this home. We Which won't most of them are anymore. actually made in Latvia, apparently. <laughs> so... But yeah, the it, well, Ontario did that. The LCBO is no longer carrying. 
That's what I'm uh, saying. Yeah, yeah. Like Russian vodka, and then and then they, and then like dude, like FIFA, like uh, the, they today removed the Russian team from the video game. Funny. A- and uh, what is it? CCM is is the hockey company. Is they're they're not uh, well. They were running any sponsors. They were kicking or? Russians off OnlyFans, <laughs> but then they basically let them back on because <laughs> the sex worker lo- lobby's strong right now. Yeah. <laughs> OnlyFans. Every time they try to make a big uh, publicity stunt thing, Just, everyone goes. All of the people go. What are you doing? And yeah, like all the fucking the- <laughs> prostitutes or whatever go. Fuck this. And then that's they the go, thing. Russia oh, doesn't sorry. have. They, Russia only like. Do you do you know of any Russian product you've ever purchased? They have oil and wheat. Well, and apparently so, Stoli vodka, I guess. <laughs> but I don't think so. I think it's actually made in uh, Latvia. Maybe not, but they don't really make shit. Right. They don't have from exports. Well, so yeah, they're a, <laughs> somewhat of a self-sufficient economy. It's yeah, uh, they, they have wheat and uh, uh, oil. That's I mean, oil is the main one. That girl's viral video did... Uh, 50,000 views. So basically, pro- I don't know who hasn't seen this, but the bas- poem? The poem. No, 50 million. 50 million views yeah, yeah. that Danny made fun of or whatever. <laughs> but that that is crazy the extent to which everyone came together and was like, this is the gayest shit oh, anyone's ever made. The cringiest. <laughs> what, no matter what side of your aisle you're if on. If you haven't seen this, she goes, if, if Putin was my son, I would have treated him better. Because they want to make it seem like... Uh, like he's like a he's gone mad sort of thing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, which some people do think that. Yeah, I've I've been seeing some thoughts. Which you know he's so whenever he has a photo of him and his generals, it's like an eighty foot long table, and he's at one end of it, and they're all at the other end. of I it. I know. You know, like it kind of is crazy yeah. watching that stuff. The only thing I can't think of, or I can't really imagine, is he has all these sanctions, but he had to see all this shit coming. He, you say that you thought this wasn't the biggest, uh, like it's not working out that great for him, this move. Well, it's not because it doesn't sound like they anticipated the actual Ukrainian civilians to grab guns and take up arms against. I think they thought we were going to march in and it'll be, you know, a day of this shit and it'll be all kind of like just red tape and we'll that's just the get in there it. and that's the end of it. And dude, you know, like remember Vladimir Klitschko, the heavyweight boxer champion of the world and his brother Vitali, they were both heavyweight champions of the world boxing forever. Uh, and one of them is the mayor of Kiev and they're just like, yeah, we're fucking fighting you guys. So you have to deal with the former heavyweight champion of the world. You're, you're coming in there to some like puke 19 year old conscript from Russia who just is like, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. And it's like yeah. fucking, these dudes are like six, eight. <laughs> That's what that, the citizens fighting as well. That, that was another one funny that they did say there was just like, Hey, anyone who wants to come fight with us is welcome to. And it was just funny. Everyone that wanted to fight. It was just kind of like, oh, you know, we're not going to come there and fight. And they're like, no, no, come on. Everyone's like, we need to do everything. Everything in our power, and then the Ukrainian government's like, "Yo, come down. We'll give you guns." And everyone's like, "I don't." Know the message, you know, they released all these prisoners. That was it's, my. It's that was another up, one of my favorites. Like, a, like it's like a movie. The, releasing the prisoners is literally like some dudes in his cell smoking a. No, this is every movie. Go, when the aliens gun. come down, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane, dude. It was uh that was the 100, the 109 or whatever. That's what they do. They fucking, they legitimately go get the biggest guy. And it never works out very good, releasing <laughs> no, 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 the no. prisoners. Because afterwards, they want to be like, good fight. Anyways, back to your cage. Right. What do they do? Well, no, no, I think they say so, they fight for their freedom. I think some of them, the, you, I think some of them, you fight for the freedom and then they let you just wander off into the woods. That's how That's that movie you ends. You get to go in the woods. You get yeah. to go the, live in the woods. Well, especially some of them where they go, the guy's out there uh, fighting and shooting or whatever. And he's going to the house and afterwards they go, you're a hero. And they go, what was he in there? Raped a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> I guess certain Well, things. there are probably some like kid rapists. I don't think they'd let out everybody, but you know, like someone who's a violent murderer, they go, okay, I just promise us yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. murder look, the wrong people. <laughs> look at me in the but, eyes. Yeah, but the kid diddlers, they're probably like, hey, I can fight. And they're like, nah, you're going to stay. I think you're going to stay. Yeah, we have our limits. But yeah, you're right. That would be huge though. Yeah, Imagine man. you just got in for your one year sentence and they go, you're back out and fighting and you, oh man, that'd be the dream. More importantly, sort of. if you have some dude who, you know, killed a serial killer who was like wearing people's skin and boiling them and eating them. You go, <laughs> get this guy to the front. That really is like a movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Honestly, it's insane. And they took, uh, the ceremonial stuff's just so funny. Like me, the judo organization taking uh, Putin's belt away. <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite things I've seen. <laughs> they took his black belt away. 
It's, it's crazy. And his black his power. I was saying this in my video, but his powers do come from his black belt. Have you you've seen all the videos, yeah, right? Where judo, chip, yeah. He, and he he's he's teaching kids. He's got the Seagal thing. He does the same thing as Seagal. Remember when Seagal was doing the UFC fighters? Are, are we keeping Seagal up? Well, yeah. Trader to America, Steven Seagal. Nah, you'll never, dude. If, if, <laughs> if Seagal goes full Russian, he hasn't spoke yet. But yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. he says, I'm with. His agent is probably like, please, Stephen, if you ever want to work again, ever want to work again, if the agent work. wants to work again, he makes his own movies. He funds. <laughs> his own movies he writes direct dude i think he does his own catering (laughs) he comes in he goes that was the best sandwich i've ever eaten (laughs) yeah who made it it? i did did. (laughs) seagal he doesn't need shit but he he he, seagal does the thing where you know he brings all these people and that just and then he lets them uh they let him beat him up right for his demonstrations putin he used to play uh hockey i know yeah Uh, he would play in the hockey game. He plays game regularly still. And with the he plays just pick up in the nights. Russian National League. Yeah. And fucking score like twelve goals. It's legitimately the dictator, like the Sasha Baron Cohen yeah. movie, The Dictator, when he's just crushing everybody. Oh, oh yeah, it's insane. <laughs> that stuff's so fun. I mean, he has no. Di- the, someone I was talking to was saying, you know, the problem is he's had n- he has nobody telling him no. Yeah, that doesn't help after the, after twenty I mean, years. Classic, that gets you a little classic wild. Classic dictator stuff where he's like, "We should invade. We should do this," and everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah hell yeah, dude! Great idea. We're gonna." How do you do we'll, it? We'll How do you it? keep coming up with such well, good ideas? I mean, every we'll single win time. this in a day. You yeah. Know? It's, well, with uh, the Seagal, he used to uh, go to the UFC, and he had the one guy Anderson that he would uh, show him kicks, and he would literally spend. Uh, eight minutes with them and then the guy would win and Seagal would go on to a press tour about how he basically <laughs> taught him everything he knows it was incredible right but that was the same thing the Russian guy he basically goes to these karate matches and it gives the guys a little pep talk and then he basically says I think he probably gives both sides a pep talk and then he comes out and he goes <laughs> yeah I mean that was the another the all th- Putin charm thing too they, w- they would post uh, polls from Russia I mean like you know 50% of Russians support him and you're like no, they don't. They're just those are the fifty percent who want to like keep their shit and they're right. Like, you those are anonymous go, polls. You're saying, <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. They're not anonymous. And you're like, it's not fifty percent. Yeah, imagine it's probably twenty five or thirty percent. Nine guys show up at your house and they go, so what do you think? Putin sick or not sick? And then you go, <laughs> great guy. They just have a great guy bat hitting against their hand. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not well. Yeah, that was your story that your your family friend was it in Russia that they said something wrong about Putin and then just disappeared. No, it was my for grandmother's. No, no, no. This wasn't about Putin. This was. Well, Putin w- used to be part of the KGB, right? He was like a star KGB agent kind of good or whatever. He was a up and coming Under, KGB. Yeah, guy. and then he. I was actually listening to some podcasts, and then he basically helped Yeltsin out a lot. That's how he got into power. But uh, no, this is KGB in like the fifties. My grandmother, just someone in a in her building, told a joke about the government. The whole thing with communism and that stuff is they kind of say everybody's ratting on each other. Everybody's kind of a spy. Kind of like how it is now. Kind of yeah, in comedy essentially. And then uh, they uh, but. It, he just told some joke about you know making fun of like hey Trump's orange equivalent and go, yeah, Trump, that Trump is an orange guy your jumpsuit's now orange for love the red and light then and he's now rocks. B- breaking rocks in making Siberia. license plates <laughs> breaking rocks in Siberia for how long did they go maybe break 10 rocks? years or something that'd be tough probably yeah there's not even a purpose of it. It's just breaking rocks for the sake of punishment. Yeah, that that is the th- is that the thing where they just try to break you where you have to yeah. do stuff that doesn't even make sense. At yeah, least here it's, you're making it's not like plays. they have some big rock industry. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, hey, see those rocks? Let's make them smaller. That's There's an endless supply of them. Not great. No. Well, that was some of my favorite ones. The not enough women on Ukraine's board. There was a lot of posts going around like that where they would post uh, Ukraine and it would be like him having meetings with three or four people. And then people would posting like, why is there no more women here, you know, involved in (laughs) (laughs) they need more women deciding what the Ukrainian government's going to do right now to fight back. Uh, the Young Turks had a great one. Chen Gonger, who's pretty good for takes right now because he's missed. He's really getting crazy. He's well, he's, he's just so, you know, he was this, uh, whatever internet leftist it's just turned like straight up Democrat corporate shill essentially yeah, right but he's, he's really like angry it seems <laughs> is he angry yeah he's sort of like a left wing Alex Jones in Con- it. he yeah. is yeah he's got like it's all puffed his chest he, up. his chest is puffed out yeah yeah but basically he came out and among other people but he was one of the main ones that says the only reason that um, p- people are letting Putin get away with this is because he's white man oh yeah, yeah of course this and is- then which is so funny because 
you could easily make the argument the other way where you go, the like, if you really believe that's what's happening, you go, first of all, they're sort of not getting away with it. But second of all, you could also make the argument saying the only reason that people are rallying around Ukraine so much is because they're white. Like you could easily make yeah, that same w- argument and go, if this was fucking Yemen, would really everyone in America be I mean, well, not we, to say it's well, true, but I go, would that not the same I argument mean, could be made both ways? It's happening in Yemen right now. It is happening in Yemen. <laughs> yeah. Well, not the exact same, but I mean, it's happening same, by, America, by America almost. America, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you go that argument, both sides are white. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're it's, it's, ethnically the same. It's literally the representation thing where people say, you know, we need representation so that we, we need to see uh, on TV an Asian mechanic. So I know that I could be an Asian mechanic yeah. or whatever. So it's people are finally seeing themselves as refugees and they go, oh, shit, that could happen to me. Like, and that's when it affects them, I guess. I don't know. You think that's what's happening with him? Well, that's the explanation. I mean, when he's saying, oh, like it's whatever, white people, that's why white people care. It's he's saying like, he's saying white people. No, no, I'm saying you could make that argument. Oh. He's saying that Russia is getting away with this because he's a white man. Oh, oh, I was saying the other side. Of well, it, no, no, that, my never, point was yeah, yeah. you could literally make that yeah, same make argument anything, both ways because sure. they're both white. Yeah, I mean, it's it, yeah, <laughs> so it's, it was just obviously what that's called is propaganda to try to fucking oh, push boy, whatever. I mean, speaking of propaganda, the I've been following the Russian Times. Danny has been. Ba-da-da-da-da. Is that their love? Logo? No, uh, it's RT. Jingle? RT? No, they don't. No, no, I just started. I just broke out in a jingle. Well, Danny, uh, you've always been following Russian Times. He's always sending me articles. No, I only. No, no I just. Oh, I been... just started following it, but it's funny because they have two comedians, American comedians, who have shows. Well, they have other people too. Like they've they reached out to people in America, comedians, and they asked them. To, they want to fund American comedians, so it, they I do. No, With I Dennis know one. Miller. Yeah. Dennis, so Dennis Miller canceled his show. So Dennis Miller had a show on RT. Yeah, up until like three days ago. Isn't that strange? Yes. I mean, they wanted to take a meeting and stuff, and I was kind of like, I didn't get it at the time. I go, so the Russian government just puts all this money into funding Canadian things, and it's essentially- Well, they have a channel, and you know- if it, Where's on, the channel? It's on cable on, you know, uh, probably like the 300s. Right. And they have this channel, and for them- you know, they have tons of money for them to get any sort of influence and to come off as not propaganda. It's worth it. So they get, but how does it come off as not propaganda? If you're, cha- if you're, oh, I have well, my new TV be- show, not propaganda. What channel is it on the Russia? T- well, because before now it slipped you, under the radar, it slipped under the radar. They, you know, they weren't, if you were watching just, Mexico TV, well, it was you super be- liberal too. Like it was super like anti-war, super liberal. It's it's how um, Al Jazeera has like Al Jazeera yeah, has yeah, AJ too, plus, yeah. and some of their shows are big. Yeah, and they're but they're super. They're you know they're like Trump is bad, and they're super woke. Like and so that's kind of the RT thing. And they had this guy Lee Camp, who had he's a comedian, and he had a show too. It's called um, Redacted Tonight. I believe is a show and he had his episode last week and I saw this right after the invasion and he posted it on Twitter and everybody's like, yo, what the fuck, man? Cause, cause they, everybody kind of just was fine with it until so, this happened. So basically and his episode, he does not even mention <laughs> anything that's happening. He's, he's just talking like, complete business as usual. He's just like, yeah, so fucking Biden elected a black Supreme court justice. That's great. It's crazy. <laughs> They completely ignore but it. But again, his marching orders, he probably gets paid handsomely. Right. Right? Like, that's their big thing is they probably, Dennis Miller and stuff, nobody was giving Dennis Miller a show. And then they were like, hey, Dennis Miller, we'll give you a show and pay you more than what you've ever made. No, they got money, yeah. Right? So you, you kind of like, <laughs> God damn. Maybe I hard. opened up some fucking conversations with Russia today. Yeah. Well, they're about to get banned, which is not a good thing. Right. Okay. So in terms of the- So Dennis know, Miller said, I'm not going to do my Russian Dennis show. Miller was just like, okay, I'm done. This is- I'm I'm out of here, but it was, too, uh, it was too hot for him. Lee Camp is kind of he's like I'm doing. He's this still shit. kicking. He just he's doing business as usual. Well, he's so Lee Camp's kind Kamala, of Kamala. He's talking about Elizabeth. Is, Warren. He's just like I've always been anti-war. I'm against this war. I've always been anti-war. So it's consistent. But don't yeah. believe everything you see with what's going on online in terms of like you know. It is one of those things which is where true. you yes, but it, it is a position where. If you're if your position certain this is why I think a lot of times the best comedians don't sort of uh 
take you know, shows on Russia. <laughs> no, no, today? but uh, align themselves completely with fucking political. So anyone gives a shit what you have to think. It's the same reason why, it, Danny, if you and your girlfriend were in a fight and I wanted to weigh in to her, yeah. is my opinion worth anything? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. obviously, you know, if you're on the fucking, you know, uh, the the Hillary network and the, they're talking about politics and you go, I have something to say about, you know, I actually think Hillary's innocent. You go, do you now? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, again, th this, these are just two guys who took probably <laughs> literal bags of money. They took bags. But I don't they, know if they have that much bags. RT? You think they're putting out money for the show? Oil money. It's straight okay. up. It's straight up their Russian propaganda. I was, I went on their Twitter. Well, I know a few people. That I went on their Twitter here. earlier and their big thing is saying, Hey, there's lies going out on about us, you know, and the lies are essentially like hey, about the, the network or about Russia, about Russia. Okay. But the lies are, are like, Hey, ghost of Kiev. Do you see that fighter mm -hmm. pilot? And it was like a fake thing. And they yeah. were like, yeah, there's these fake things. Like, but there's, there, but all those other things are real. Like watching a, you know, a bomb fucking hit a TV tower and all this shit. And right. they're trying to be like, well, you know, but there's a few things that, you know, look, look at us. We, we gave them the, the, some citizens, some tea. Or okay. You know, like these minor things, you go, but you're ignoring all the other things that are true, right. that are bad. But and, there is and just pointing out that there's a few things that have been. Yeah, yeah. Missed. But I think there is something <laughs> to be said about whether it's coming from them or not, where you go for the. And this is where I think a lot of people are at, where you go. It's very hard to right now in anything. It's hard to parse out what's happening because you've watched everyone lie to you too much yeah so you're and always there are sort of, still you know, tons of people retweeting the classic thing is the snake island you see that the the snake island thing or whatever uh that was that was the first thing where the first thing that That's happened me and the boys come out and we got the dongs out the we got snake, snake island, island. but so they have yeah, this they island that they island. occupy um just as a like there's nothing goes on there but they just need the land or whatever and then you know they go hey this is russia surrender and then they go F go fuck yourself and that was like everywhere that they, these and then they go and then they killed them all and the ukrainian government says they're going to be posthumously uh like heroes blah, blah blah all this stuff and then it just came out that they all did surrender and the russians uh none yeah, of them were killed i saw that. but i still see people posting that it doesn't and stop i and it, i still yeah. see it on the news even though it's been debunked that they none of them were killed. They're still just they post it because why not? It gets gets the clicks and yeah, you know well, it's, it gets the clicks, but it seems to align with the message people want to get out there. Whatever, but this right? is I mean it's David versus Goliath. Who wants to post pro Goliath stuff? <laughs> like even if you're even well, if it's a lie, I guess it's David versus Goliath, unless. You know, the United States was involved, and then all of a sudden it's Goliath versus smaller Goliath, <laughs> I guess, right? No, way bigger Goliath. No, I, I, I was. I mean, oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if, if Russia decides to step a foot into Poland, this thing is fucking over. You're saying it's fucking done so for Putin. Oh, yeah. But what if they unleash their secret weapon? of Putin where they go, you know what, this is too much and there's only one man that could stop it and then Steven Seagal <laughs> and Putin get out of the jet and just fucking whoosh, 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 one after they another. They get dropped down from the helicopter <laughs> just in downtown. You would not want that. And it's Putin and Seagal <laughs> against the two Klitschko brothers and they all have weapons, you know, but they they throw them down, <laughs> take off the shirts, <laughs> pop, the, pop the shirts, fucking yeah. drop the weapons That's and like, let's the do this mano a mano. In, in, the, in the Seagal movies, yeah, has like 15 seconds to get this he has to get uh to this thing to press the button before the whole town gets nuked or whatever and he has like a very limited amount of time maybe a minute and then he still drops the weapons and goes yeah. <laughs> he goes hand to hand combat he goes, yeah he goes i don't want i don't want this to be too easy <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's what'll probably happen if America tried to drop a bomb. They would drop Putin, yeah. and then he would. They and then they would the Judo Association. What they wouldn't realize is he sent one of his minions to go steal back his belt. Yeah, the real scary thing with Putin actually is that he very much he has. No, there's no scenario even even if he totally miscalculated all this stuff. There's no scenario where he goes back to Russia with his tail between his legs. Right. You know. So if anything, he's just going to get kind of crazier. I actually was thinking, not that I'm worried about an actual nuke 
dropping, mm -hmm. even though that would suck. But I am worried that we're going to get in fucking toilet paper COVID 2.0, where the thoughts of this start causing people to start people panicking. People lose their minds. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, we got to go see all the canned goods and all the toilet paper. And it's just going to be COVID 2.0 with that shit, yeah. where everything's going to run out of everything. If they have the fucking nerve to do some bullshit on the day of my special, I swear to God, uh, dude. But that's the, I'm actually, it's on site with Putin if he does some <laughs> fucking nonsense on March 7th. <laughs> if Putin decides that he's going to do some, like, you know, step foot into Poland or some shit like that, oh, March 7th, I'm telling you, Putin, and I know your boys with Seagal, so I'm, that's the only reason I'm giving you this warning. Yep. But this is a verbal. Do not make it get physical. That's all. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, it would not be cool. I'm going to take a quick second here to tell you about a product that I've told you about before in the videos. Ladies and gentlemen, Fume. Now, this is the best way to quit smoking. You know, maybe you've been fucking smoking. Maybe you've been vaping. It's coming too much. You're coughing everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not talking about on a dick. <laughs> That's an example of how coughing might sound. But fume is basically the best way to quit smoking. And I think they are very cool because you can actually even take them into the fucking airport yeah, you do and stuff anywhere, like right? that. Yes, and they have... Also, little, what are you doing still smoking your turkeys? You can't be smoking, dude. It's ridiculous. And then you basically have a... I actually, it is actually one of those things when I see someone that for real kind of like, oh, I need to go have a smoke. It's kind of like, if yeah, you're not you, drinking at a party or something and you're kind of like as an adult, you go, oh, I got to leave. Oh, I got to my smoke. Yeah, just like, yeah. Kind kind of seems, huddle outside. Kind of seems weak. Yeah. Seems like a weak move. It seems it, it has become just yeah. Less so in a party environment. Yeah, 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 party's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why you've got to check out Fume. It's a natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, more natural way to quit cigarettes. It's a no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine replacement for the hand to mouth habit of smoking, which is a big part of it. And they are fairly cool to use. Replace the habit with Fume handcrafted wooden inhalers, so they use cores. And they're basically infused from plant oils, and they have uh, the bunch of different types of flavors, like yeah, peppermint yeah. and conquer. And then they go inside the wooden inhaler, and then you take that out, and you seem like kind of a cool pipe. And it gives guy. you still the oral fixation, which is a big part of that stuff. Yes. 100% natural flavors, no harmful chemicals, no BS. Also, it's a Canadian company, which could be a negative, could be a positive. <laughs> Ask them how they feel about the truckers. Yeah, yeah no, they're they're, they're, support, they're supporting them. They're 100%. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to speak on their behalf, but the Fume guys are cool. I talked yeah, to them on yeah. the phone and stuff. <laughs> Not only does Fume help with the quitting process, they're also support beyond quitting. They have uh, over a dozen cores for relaxation, energy, and more. So you can just take their free quiz to get started. And basically, so it's even after you quit, you can just do it because it's kind of fun. So whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker still struggles with craving, Fume is the perfect tool for you. Head over to breathefume.com slash boyscast. Use the promo code boyscast to save 10% off your entire order. That's 10% of your order with breathefume.com slash boyscast and then use the code boyscast. Next, because we are out here trying to turn you into ripped, jacked, fucking legends. Fucking legends, Just, God. Just legendary jacked dudes. You want to get on Athletic Green. So that's probably my favorite one that I've ever taken of uh, like morning shakes or yeah, situations. Yeah, I, I love that. Like so this. it's tropical taste. And like I said last week, I was getting trimming down too. So I've been sort of replacing things with just taking that. And it's all of the vitamins you need. So if you didn't have time, you wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, hated taking pills or vitamins, wanted a supplement that actually tastes great you want or you wanted to see what the hype is about with people like Ricky Gervais and Tim Ferris that are all singing the praises of athletic greens I've been on it for you know months now doesn't taste super healthy it's kind of a mild tropical taste and I pumped about taking it so what is with the stuff one delicious scoop of athletic greens and I switched from stirring to I do shake it up now oh you've been stirring you lunatic I, you already made fun of me about this so I bought one of the things that you put it in now, so now I'm shaking it I remember, now I remember it is better it. yes I've, I was that was a stupid part <laughs> stupid on my part well, now I'm absorbing all of the 75. <laughs> I mean, you were absorbing vitamins. them before, it's just not as pleasantly. Some of them, well, some of the vitamins were, were not uh, yeah, totally they... <laughs> absorbed into the water because of my stirring. You're going to want to be shaking it up. 
Whole foods source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to help start your day right. Special blend of ingredients supports your gut health and nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, aging, all of the things. Mental clarity and alertness, and you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance trusted by leading health experts. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the cold and flu season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash boyscast again. That is athleticgreens.com slash boyscast to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. The next thing that was funny was the Taliban uh, condemning, Yeah, which was the Taliban condemning it is just the Taliban doing anything right now fucking rules. Like I, I like I follow Osama bin Laden's uh, family members and anything. But they're that, like the the Trump. They love the, Trump the, the and Trump stuff. Love, they're the American family members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, it's it's funny very much when the Taliban condemns anything and they just anytime they release, it's kind of even Trump's press releases are still funny, right? But the Taliban coming and being like. This guy is fucking nuts, huh? <laughs> Just licking an ice cream, being like, <laughs> you believe this guy? You believe these turkeys? Also, I guess it was a funny move, Russia saying that we're starting the anti-fascist conference, them doing the same trick that Antifa does here, where they go- oh, with the not Well, that's what they said, we're going to go de-Nazify Ukraine. Right. Oh. But they it, do have Nazis. It is the sure. old, it's the oldest trick in the book, right? Where yeah. everyone does this, they go, they go- uh, it, I always say the government, what their big thing is, they go, this is the bill. They go, this is the help everyone bill. You go, what's in there? You go, none of your business. <laughs> none of your fucking business. What's in the help everyone bill? Do you not? Do you? you? Oh, you want to not help anyone? <laughs> okay. We make can do that too, I guess. Yeah, the make people's lives better bill. And you go, what's in there? And you go, hup, hup, hup. they <laughs> slap your <laughs> hand <laughs> away, right? Yeah, yeah, so they don't, they don't don't fucking worry what's in the make everyone's life better bill. So that's kind of what they the anti fascist thing was, right? But it, it's funny to watch fifteen different people being like, "We're anti fascists." Like, we're actually anti fascists. Like, oh yeah. Well. Also, it's coming from Putin. If if he had any sort of other reputation, maybe that would have. Like he said, he goes, oh, we're going to get rid of the Nazis. And there are, there is this thing called like the Azov Battalion who are in Eastern Ukraine, uh, who are part of those like uh, yeah. territories that wanted to separate. And they are legit. Well, that's Nazis, one of the things. But that, there's not a lot of them. Well, that was one of the things our body was pointing out that's funny that because, you know, the narrative is, you know, full forest Russians bad or whatever. They're sort of saying these actual Nazis are actually not that bad and that's propaganda. They're, they're, it's bullied them into supporting actual Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he was sort of pointing out. So, yeah, basically. So one of yeah, the, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah, funny yeah. unintended consequences of this whole thing. Um, I thought it was just an interesting one that to watch everyone cheer on when they're like, hey, we're giving our citizens back the guns because we took all their guns away and then we're giving them back their guns now to fight again. Well, you're not hearing a lot from the, the anti-Second Amendment people right now. They're, they're kind of gone quiet. Exactly, right? Pretty much, you know. Another thing was... The, the worst thing would be... A, the worst thing for them right now would be a big school mass shooting. <laughs> yeah, they'd, they'd be torn, they'd, right? They'd be, yeah, they're like, should everybody have guns? Should everybody not have guns? Well, they had... Uh, so there was that conference. It was like America First conference, was it, that you sent me or something? Yeah, the Nick Fuentes. So basically, they had this guy there, and I guess they were sort of like saying Russia rules, right? Yeah, they're they're all basically... So there are Russia rules uh, because it's a all white Christian kind of mono. Well, the funny part was there was this what senator or what he was. He's no, some Joe sort of, Arpaio. He's some the sort of famous uh, sheriff from Arizona. Oh, he made okay. all the inmates. He, he ran one of those outdoor prisons and they all had to wear pink hum uh, to humiliate those them. Those guys seem like bad guys, eh? He, yeah, he is. And he's, uh, I mean, some people like him, but whenever you watch cop but he's shows, he's kind of a bit disgraced. If there's anyone here that watches cop shows, anyone in the, uh, on the podcast that happens to watch cop shows, oh, I actually do, but um, there's nothing that's worse Every time they need a bad guy, they bring down a Texas sheriff. Yeah, so yeah. Every, I'd say three times an episode in every show, the Texas sheriff who doesn't play by the rules comes and he always like thinks they're being too soft on the inmates and he's got the the fake the cowboy tie. Oh yeah, the bolo. So the Texas well, they, take, they like to take the the inmates for a ride where yeah, they yeah. they 
you know? Yeah, yeah, kind of like a toss them around. Yeah, they have a whole f- every they have a word. There was for all that. these A and E spe- forever. A and E would do you know worst prisons in America. It's always and Texas. It's, ones? No, no, it's not Texas. Uh, Arizona, but it was always him, Joe Arpaio, because he was like into humiliating the the <laughs> gotcha with the pink. so they like him. Well, well anyway, like he him, does a thing and they he like goes, him at, he goes on the he's at, he's doing a speech and he goes, you know, these people called me the most racist guy in the world and everyone cheers and he goes. Well, I don't know why you're cheering. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, wait, do you think I am racist? Yeah, he goes, he was, it's kind of like an older guy not understanding the the like context yeah, well, of these They things. just invited him. They say, hey, here's 1,200 <laughs> Republicans, because Marjorie Taylor Greene was right. there too. Hey, here's 1,200 young Republicans. And they're just like, okay, well, well, I guess we'll talk to them. One interesting thing was, and someone else pointed this out, but or multiple people, but Brian Stalter, the sex machine. Yeah. He, him and some of the news people, their ratings have been up lately, right? Oh, this war is the greatest thing that ever happened right. in the news. It, well, exactly. And which is why it's always, you know, I, I think it's so important to always kind of understand people's incentives whenever you're deciding whether to listen to them on anything. But with Stelter, he's posting this big thing being like, hey, the ratings of our ratings have been really high and uh, the internet ratings have been down, which just goes to show you when something really bad's happening, people still turn to us because they know that we have the real facts. And it was like, well, this is also a good way to point out that you are very fucking incentivized for this to keep (laughs) happening. Oh, I'll (laughs) I'll tell you anecdotally, personally, I had YouTube TV and then I canceled it like three months ago because I just never really watched it and I just, there was nothing on there. And then the war fired back up and I, I'm like, all right, I gotta, gotta re up the subscription because I need the news. Oh, so you had, so you had actual news. Well, I, I mean, I mostly am on Twitter. Who have you been following news wise? Who's your guy? Who's your go to? Tucker? No, I just watch them. I watch them all. I flip. Uh, I just go. MSN. You try to ingest the whole I go thing. MSNBC. You want the whole C- ball I, of wax. I, I want all. And then I have some. I have these Twitter, some Russian Twitter accounts that I follow, and I have some Ukrainian Twitter accounts that I follow, just to kind of. Well, and then I'm trying to fucking trying to stoked right cross, now. Cross cross check them all to ideally. You got the get ball and the yarn on. up, yeah. yeah. So that's what's going on with with Stelter. But it's very interesting because it's like. There's nothing the news likes more than a good fucking war. I mean, that's what made CNN was the war in like September 11th war in Iraq. That's what really catapulted them into the kind of next level. Being ter- a real, real next news. level territory was yeah, w- w- like the status that they have. So yeah, it's funny to watch networks that's their like bread that, that beat the fucking you know Iraq war drums and all the uh, you know kind of the Muslim you know Muslim propaganda now kind of coming back and being. And, it is interesting because they don't kind of really relating. have alternate takes. You know, they were, f- up until two months ago, Fox and CNN were opposites. And now you watch them, you're like, this is the same shit. Well, that's what I said to you. They, yeah. they, it's, they, that's what my thing was, is that you have the fucking neocons and the neo-fucking Democrats or whatever, just like, you know, after the meeting, like, hey, bro, you know, you're not so bad, eh? Hey, <laughs> you're not so bad yourself. What are we doing? Because this is the one thing they can agree on. Because it's good for everyone. The only thing I would say is CNN, this is good for CNN everyone. will have more posturing about America needing to get involved. Whereas Fox, I feel, will have a little bit... Fox has a little bit less. They're kind of trying to get ahead of this. Well, also saying, like, some other no base, sir. probably. Exactly. But it is funny to be like, oh, I'm this like left-wing person. And you know, CNN did this poll. And basically, they said... Uh, 80% of the people think that America should go fight this war for, um, in, on behalf of Ukraine or some version, like, mm-hmm. you know, 70 to 80% of people or whatever. And it was like, it's just funny. It is this fucking, you know, and whether or not that's the right move, there's something so funny about these, like just being this, you know, 60 year old, like rich lady fucking on the upper West side being like, yeah, they should go fight. Mm-hmm. And you go, but like in with zero skin in the game, People talking about like war that fucking have no skin in the game. You're like, yeah, a bunch of people should go die. And you go, would you be one of them? It's like, would anyone know? I mean, I mean the them? moment that maybe America feels that they're at risk, I, I understand that, but not until right. that point. The, like, there is this NATO thing. That's kind of the whole point is to not, you know, as far as I understand, like all these countries uh, who apparently were all kind of not very cooperative and are now. So. 
the late night shows were loving that. That's uh, the Trump one thing I back. actually haven't seen. Well, is, no, it's still any late nights. So the Trump war. was out there kind of saying that Russia was making smart moves or whatever, and they they were all licking their lips. So from you know there was they they were those profile pieces were oh, back yeah, yeah. where they say what Trump said and then show back to back. Here's what Noah said. Here's what Colbert says. Here's what Kimmel says. Poo poo poo. The three punch. That's not that was Trump's worst nightmare. I mean, Trump, when all three Trump, of them come at him. Trump bad. He, I'm, he made the same miscalculation that Russia made, which is that the U Ukrainian people wouldn't fight back. So Trump was like, oh, it's so smart of him, blah, blah, blah. He's, Trump assumed it would be over in 24 hours, too. Yeah. Because he was just watching the And news. he kind of had to go back on that and be like, it wasn't the, the smartest move. Yeah. Well, it, because it wasn't. Yeah. You know, now you see it a week later, and you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's not working out. So he, he just kind of was eating the gruel that fucking everybody else was eating getting spoon fed and yeah sp so what happened yeah because putin started getting bitched around a little bit but yeah then what happens i guess if he gets well he just wasn't expecting to have any uh like pushback at all he was just gonna roll right into kiev and take it it seems like there was um people are and why I, would he think that though because there are so many people there who are russian he thought that they'd be pumped to be in part of Russia. Yeah, the, and he goes, is there, there be, there, in your opinion, how many people? What percentage of people are pumped to be engulfed? Uh, to to be annexed, no, there's some, but you know, again, those wet, those eastern uh, like separatist portions or whatever. That's not Kiev. Kiev's the capital of five million people on the other side of the country. Basically, he just needed to take over the government, install a new puppet government. Okay. If you were there, yeah, would you? If you were Ukrainian, are you dipping or are you staying and fight? If I'm ethnically Ukrainian, if you're ethnically Ukrainian, Russians coming, do you? You know, when they say every citizen, every man, every the women and children can leave, all the men have to stay. I mean, you don't even have the choice to leave. No, I know. Yeah, Do yeah. you try to make a break for Go it? Go trans? <laughs> That's why I'm saying you missed Doubtfire your way out of the country. <laughs> oh, hello. My, my point is, do you stay and fight or are you? do you try to weasel out? Uh, that's a tough question. I can only. Put, Are you on the bottom of a, a train? I can only kind put, of thing. I can only put myself in the <laughs> shoes of if I was living in Canada still. If you're living and in there Canada, was like, and there was some sort of invasion, and and then Justin Trudeau I goes, mean, everyone, pick up your arms and fight. I mean, I don't know how. Do you I, get? I, do you I, get a gun? I think I'd you get your nunchucks. To, toy with the idea of the gun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it was something, imagine you were in Canada, and then all of a sudden downtown Toronto, there's just Chinese tanks rolling through. You probably are like, are you standing? You probably have feelings about that that you never thought you would have until you actually see it. Well, you know? I got to be honest. I think my feelings are we're getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you. I guess I mean, you, you try. You got to try to get your mom. So here, here's and your the people thing. Out of there I first, would. But... I, I, well, yeah. I, I think I run a mission to I get the family out of did, there. I actually did <laughs> think about this, and I would straight up do what I would do when I played Call of Duty, which is which what? is I'd be a camper. Everybody hates the campers. I know people are just rolling their eyes right now, but I'd be like the sniper. I, I would try to be a sniper. I would be you know at the top of some building, <laughs> yeah. just like peeking my eye over, and then just fucking just picking off. Or at least trying to. I always think of my one buddy who's a uh, <laughs> university. It's like the most hated people oh in Call God, of yeah. Duty is some guy who's just like in the corner of the map, <laughs> can't see it, he just doesn't get that many kills. It's the same as the guys that used to play paintball and they would wait for like a bunch of, like a hockey team to come in and for their, yeah. their year, pl and they, they, they're just regulars at the thing and they stand up at the top just sniping 12 year olds yeah, and this guy's got amazing. all the gear and the best goggles. But there is this, another issue too. The, the they all look the same. Although, you know, they obviously have different dialects, but they all look the same. And then they're wearing each other's uniforms. It's hard it's to figure nightmare. out who's who, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're ethnically the same, too, yeah. Yeah, and they, you know, they have, it's it's the equivalent difference in language of a Canadian and an American, kind of. Yeah. It's hard, you can tell, but it's not super easy. And genetically, they look all the same. Right. Well, I was, anyways, it was, this always reminds me of my body that <laughs> he was, he was uh, on vacation somewhere and had an earthquake and him and his uh, fiance were there and the ground started shaking and sort of like splitting or whatever. Uh -huh. And then he fucking took off like a bat <laughs> out of hell. And then he said, he said his wife wouldn't talk to, or his fiance wouldn't talk to him for like a week and a half. Did he assume <laughs> she was just following him? <laughs> He's a pussy. He just, 
I mean, I was in Mexico City. There's a pretty ma- there's a pretty gone. major earthquake when I was in Mexico City. But... Did you take off or did you stay? Well, there to were get two, your there, were, there were two actually. It you was... put your sweater down over the crack for her to walk. No, there over. was there was one. We were walking uh, outside, and like I was looking at a it, this siren started going off, and then I looked up at a church steeple, and it was just swaying back. Like I thought I was like on a- having an acid flashback. Whoa. It was like you're swaying. normally on acid too, exactly. And it was like swaying back and forth, and I was like, holy fuck! And then at, like the streets just filled up with people. Everybody left there because that's the safest is Whoa. being outside. But then that night there was another earthquake, and we were in our room, and I remember the sh- it started shaking, and I just was grabbed her and we ran out of the the hotel you went you did grab the girl but i did grab her i didn't just take off like i'm gonna go see what's in the hallway and then just peace how funny is that just fucking but she was she thought it was nothing she thought it was loud music and and i it was is her side of the story that's you know there was basically a tiny thunderstorm and danny was like no no, oh my no, god, no, no, no. get your stuff! We're going home! No, no, no. Get, take shelter! Take shelter! No, that was probably the most I've ever been a man in my life, I think. Yeah. In that moment, because I was I was right about the fact that it was an earthquake. But it was mine. Like something happened to the bed. Have you ever done one of these where you're with a girl or something and then someone is talking and you go, Hey, leave her alone? Have you ever done one of those? <laughs> no. <laughs> You come up and you go, she's all yours, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go to the girl and you go, go yo, really? I, hey, you're going to talk to this guy, huh? Thanks for taking her off my hands. Yeah. Fist bump. Thanks, guy. buddy. And hey, next drink's on me, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to really piss her off. Well, we went to a pretty, we went to like a fucking super banging like billionaire party or whatever. Yeah. And I had some guy that was, he, he was, he's like a fan of the stuff. And he came up and he's like, oh, I'm, he's on a famous reality show that I won't say. Mm hmm. And he was like telling his buddies, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going on this reality show, but like, I'm going to say some base stuff. <laughs> That's what he's telling me. <laughs> what, he, he, what he does, is, what he he means is uh, that he fucking isn't a lib. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I loved the idea of him, uh, him on his reality show being like, you know, and which of these women do you pick? And he goes, I pick getting off the gold standard if you want to get, <laughs> you know, he's like actual. Yeah. There's only two, some girls like uh, some weird gender. She's, well, that's what She's he actually Debbie. means. He's going to say he some of that no culture stuff. Thing about bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what he is probably actually going to do. Like say some fucking two genders. Yeah, yeah, he's going to say some guys and girls are different stuff. But I like the idea he's of him bring up. About, he's going to bring up a funny thing Trump said. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, <laughs> how funny is it? Him going actual, yeah. actual fucking political theory. <laughs> oh yeah, just. Uh, has- Edit it out instantly. Well, I, uh, anyways, on speaking of rich guys, I swindled the Tinder swindler because he does cameos and they're about 100, 200 bucks, but he wants it a thousand bucks if you do it for promotional purposes. But I got him to do a personal one and I changed it around. I gave him the script that says, Hey, it's your special day. So I, I got him to do uh, it. Is he doing it? I got it all. Oh, oh, you got it? I got it all. Oh, already. you swindled the Tinder swindler? So I got it one that's Sick. a minute. Yeah, I got a minute long, but I got it to use language that I can use it for promotional. Mm. So I basically swindled the Tinder swindler nice. into doing promo for my album, White Immigrant. I just like to say that was my idea. The swindler was your idea, yeah. Yeah, to swindle the Tinder swindler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us, the- us Jews, we. I know how to swindle another Jew. <laughs> the swindler was your idea. Yeah. I used, and apparently. That's did, awesome, though. I, great, That's right? That's fucking wicked. Well, another thing, and he goes. <laughs> and he did it that quickly? Well, he, I paid an extra hundred bucks for oh, he must 24 be just hours. He's cranking these things He's out. cranking them out, so I got the one for 24 hours. So I think I paid the like. The best will be if it's actually not him, and then you tried to swindle him. Oh. He swind- <laughs> it's a guy who just looks like him, some other Israeli guy, and he goes. Never caught Did, him he, on his can, can you get him? Does he say the stuff like the enemies? Or, or is well, that that's it? what I got him to say. So I got him to say in it. He goes, uh, you know, congrats on your special day and getting the green card. He goes, you know, don't let your enemies keep you down. <laughs> Whatever happens, that's what the thing says. Some version of that, right? Yeah. But the thing, the part for me was the special day was my special coming out. Yeah. On the special day. On the special day. <laughs> the special day. You have to use have send it back. Can you just say that just different? <laughs> <laughs> the emphasis of the word. Maybe I could even tug it around. The doll's all one is funny that you posted because she's gotten more black. <laughs> she got the dreads. She's really? Again. Yeah. She's she's kind of. I love the idea she's that more tanned. Me and you had this conversation when I did the Rachel Dola's all one, but so many people were like. Does she know you're fuck? She, she does, do you think she knew you're fucking with her? And me and Danny were saying, but it's true. It's like 
zero people are getting a cameo from her that aren't fucking her yeah, with her. Like, yeah, like what is this? And what does she care? It's like uh, easy money. And Well, it's, I mean, if you were an activist and then you now, you know, became a laughing stock or whatever, but there's, she's it, a professional laughing stock. Right. But is there anyone that's getting a cameo from Rachel Dolezal because they're just like legit fans from the old days? <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah. I Fans don't even pay what? attention to the new stuff. I'm into your old activism yeah. stuff. You know, you're an early fan of the early activism. Is that possible? Maybe. No. Okay, we're going to put a pin in this uh, uh, Russia stuff for a pretty good article. That. So, Daniel, yeah. ever wanted to feel like you're a kid again? Yes. Okay. Well, Vice Magazine, in their normalizing weird stuff, has... Pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Pedophilia. <laughs> They they were so there's this whole community of the internet and this big subreddit and they're called regressors and it says ever wished you could be a kid again for age regressors you can and the thing is oh you know what let me say one last thing about fucking Tinder Swindler yeah. he's doing 20k of fucking um, club appearances yeah that sounds about right I did, I dated a girl for a second that was doing club appearances and I went with her like we were sort of dating mm -hmm. and then she did the club appearance and I went basically as like the like a way to, that a chick would go yeah like I was you sort of stood off to the side uh, it fucking was the most humiliating probably <laughs> thing I've ever done in my life <laughs> everyone comes up oh hi yeah it was when I was in the band and she was kind of famous and then people would come by and I go oh hey are you and I go I'm her date <laughs> I'm her date I'm the plus one. <laughs> And then she will come. She goes, "You good? You need any cranberry juice or something?" And I sit down with fucking my vodka cran. Oh yeah, it was humiliating. Yeah, that's it. But for him, he, what's the real oh, he's shelf life of this bad boy? You know, you, so the, the, this, these things come and go. No, he, you gotta, he, he you can gotta get gotta these. Cash yeah, you got to cash in. Now. You got to cash in. Well, so basically, the re uh, reason it reminded me of that is because I dated an age regressor, I and their whole thing is they say this isn't during sex, right? It's just a community of people that wants to act like they're fucking seven years old, right? And they go, you know, people share stuff from their stuffed animal collections, swap tips on adult pacifiers, they post photos of their coloring, and no, it's not a kink. So for them, they go nothing sexual about it. Yeah, it's not it. sexual. I just like coloring. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, for which is weird because remember, adult coloring books kind of made a th became a, a product. I don't know when. I, I remember all of a sudden people were like, "There's adult." Well, do you books. think that ever? Oh, there's a lot of these, you know, sort of um, communities of people wanting to be kids because of, you know, they're you know. Uh, it's almost, I don't know what conspiracy, but maybe like almost hack maybe is even a better way to put it. But that idea that no one grows up because, you know, people can't buy houses, no one has good jobs, like all these people have all this debt. So they just sort of find a way to live as like a kid forever. Yeah. Uh, it's the Peter Pan thing, right? It's like the, the Michael Jackson. Peter Pan sexual. Peter Pan sexual. Ooh, that's, <laughs> I like that actually. So... But I dated a girl that it was a kink. It was a kink. It was one of my favorite things. Yeah, it's probably it's on the this is the closer on the special. It was. <laughs> that's funny. This is the closer in your special because I remember I, I I said I was like you have to. I guess you couldn't do the joke when you were with her, but I remember you're like I don't know. I'm not gonna do a joke about that. I'm like please do a joke. about Well, that. yeah. Basically, she would go treat me like I'm fucking <laughs> ten years old or whatever, and she'd be like, yeah, I just finished grade six and all this fucking shit. And I was just like, so what? I have to pretend that I'm fucking a guy that's into this great time. She goes, oh, I just came into your room and I'm 10 years old. And I go, and you're like, get out, I guess. And get out of the room then. I don't know. But get out and come back when you're, you're a, a, a. How about this? Why don't we, in the, in the fantasy, how about this? You're a 30-year-old pretending to be 10, but you're still 30. <laughs> no, I'm no. actually 10. And you go, eh, this isn't doing really yes. anything for me. <laughs> if anything, it's doing you psychological damage. Yeah, it wasn't. It was not for me. No. I was just rolling my eyes the whole time and chuckling in my head. And she was six feet tall. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Oh, the whole thing was good. Uh, she goes, the, well, this is what this person says. I was never allowed to be a kid. I always had to be the adult in my family, says Sophie, a 28-year-old who is based in the U.S. <laughs> is just one of 19,000 members on age regression subreddit, an online community for those who revert to an, a younger state of mind to process trauma. Everything's to protest, process trauma with these people, right? Mm -hmm. And so basically uh, there there is that thing. You know how there is... If you go with like a two-year-old trying to act to or whatever, right? 
as soon as it's conscious, it's not cute. There was that old saying like cuteness is never cute when someone's trying to be cute. Mm -hmm. Like if a baby knows it can like fall over and you laugh, it's like, oh my God. It's like you ever see a 60 year old woman try to act like a 20 year old and dress and you're like, it's the hardest thing to look at. But the thing about your, it's like, you're just doing this stuff because two year olds don't know that they're two. Like they're not conscious. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the consciousness makes this fucking weird. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's it's definitely very weird. I don't know how this is a growing... I, I don't know what about these times makes this such a growing thing, though. That's what I'm saying. It f- is a growing thing in these times, right? I will say, some of the things they're like, you know, I just want to play, you know, play with coloring books and watch cartoons or whatever. And you go, yeah, that's every, like, fucking alcoholic 25 year old club car- chick yeah well the car and the cartoon one <laughs> order like, food. i mean how many dudes are friends of ours who just watch cartoons all the time i, I don't, don't know. think that we have that many buddies that watch cartoons all the time well, you know like anime i guess anime is more that's adults. it for a, that's not four kids yeah you know what i mean they're trying to it's it's this weird thing where they want to you know uh get away from life right but their whole thing is they go these articles, they go, we need to remove this stigma around age regression so these people can blah, blah, blah. And it's like, this is where they always go off the reservation. You go, they want to go up to these people with this weird thing that I go to and they go, what you should do is we need to get rid of this stigma so you can tell everyone, no, it's the that's bad advice. If you are this, you need to figure out a way to not be it anymore <laughs> or keep it a secret. Yeah. You, can, you know, you can pretend you're two and no one's watching or find someone to do it in secret with and that could be your sort of secret with your spouse or whatever. Yeah, remember like the Jerry Springer where the where the guys would have the diapers and stuff and they, <laughs> yeah. th- that was the OG age regression where they would have diapers and they would have some like <laughs> dominatrix to teach them, treat them like a baby. This, yeah. Yes, this reminds me uh, also back to the cop shows is they basically say, you know what? You need to go out there and tell your story, make this public to, you know, make it better for other people. And they go out there and basically say, I'm an age regressor. And it probably just ruins their life. Oh, you know what I mean? Like no one looks at the same at work. This is on their permanent record that they're this fucking freak. You know what I mean? So it <laughs> They were better off keeping it their little subreddit and if they want to have their partner that they go do their weird shit with. But it reminds me of the cop show. Every single time they try to get someone to be a witness and they go, you need to do this. This is how you make your community better. And the person goes, okay, I'll testify next day, dead. Dad, always, I know, always dead. <laughs> So you go, they don't listen to them when they say go public with you. Yeah, your- they're only trying to make you a witness to raise the stakes of the story of the detective. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. They need you to die. So they post all their stuff, but they go, they post tips on adult pacifiers and all this stuff, right? But it does feel like when you're saying the pedophile thing, doesn't it feel a little bit where it's it's almost like they got caught being a pedophile and someone's like, why do you have all these like pacifiers and stuff? And they go, oh, I'm like, they're adult pacifiers. <laughs> I, no, um, that's some sick freak. Yeah. Yeah. It's like pacifiers for kids. <laughs> you go to someone's house and they go, why do you have a bunch of pacifiers and coloring <laughs> books and children's uh, clothing? And you go, well, I mean, um, think, 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 think. I wear it. I am a regression. I'm a regressionist. I'm Benjamin Benjamin Buttoning. Because I'm currently Benjamin Buttoning. And one user told Vice that they try to regress at least once or twice a day. <laughs> I don't to- get that. That they consciously so the conscious is better than when they say for others it happens outside of their control. That is the part where you go, fuck off. I mean just buy a lollipop or something. I don't know. I feel like you could But you it go doesn't eat it in the bathroom stall and it doesn't happen outside of your control <laughs> where that's what's happening you're sitting there and you go oh what do you want to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you go <laughs> i'm regressing <laughs> You know, you start, you go, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm 30 years old, I'm 25 years old, I'm 18 years old. <laughs> Sucking on his thumb. <laughs> they can't control their regression. That would be the stuff that fucking, let's... I'll tell you. I love how they tried to separate the sex from it, though. Like, uh, nothing sexual about this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's tell us what you're like, uh, what you like (laughs) sex-wise. Yeah, yeah, nothing about that. (laughs) The opposite. I pretend I'm an old person. (laughs) Pretend I'm 80 when we're having sex. It has nothing to do with this. The subreddit was created in August 2017, but its membership has grown exponentially in the pandemic. Oh, that's sort of going to our theory, though, a little bit, right? Because you go, so the pandemic's happening. 
and you essentially have all these people that don't have jobs. They have mommy and daddy, the government, paying for their fucking thing. They're getting their check. They're getting all these rules. Yeah. And they a little bit like it. They like being told. You think they're having this problem in uh, Ukraine right now? Go, yo, grab the gun. You're like, oh, I, what the gun? <laughs> No. I don't want to go to war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine, <laughs> yeah, societies with real problems or have a ton of regressors, involuntary regressors. Yeah, that. Sort of a weird, yeah, yeah. It's this weird phenomenon where n never, uh, these people that are involuntarily aggress regressing never seems to happen to soldiers at war. No, or anywhere that's not, you know, the most comfortable countries on earth during covid lockdowns yeah i'm sure there's zero third world countries where they have this well despite what you think she said it's not always the fun things you see online sometimes you can get really emotional over small things or lonely when no one is around to talk to so when you're regressing sometimes it's not you know it's not the all fucking ball of laughs like you were thinking <laughs> but that's funny anytime your your girl starts crying you go oh she's regressing she's regressing again. <laughs> So this girl goes, you know, basically you have a chick and she's, this is, that's who is being interviewed right here, uh, Kira 20. And basically, uh, she's actually based in Belgium, which is sort of going a little bit against her theory. I but guess. also it's weird that 20 it seems like you're young. I guess she's regressing to be like a three year old. Uh, yeah. She's going back to three. Yeah. But it is funny. Uh, this person, you know, she's. Uh, just out there and she starts crying or whatever and she goes no it's because i'm regressing you go i think you're just an emotional chick and you go no no i'm six and i can't help it <laughs> she goes i have no control over when and if i regress so yeah it sounds like you just start bawling your eyes out and you go yeah it'll happen i'm a regressor can we find out if these all these people have just like been molested that's imagine they go yeah so it turns out they're just all been molested <laughs> oh okay it does turn out they've been lost it. I'm going to take another quick break here to tell you about keeps. So two out of three men will experience a form of hair loss by the time they're 35. If you want to look good, you want to be out there. If you want to swindle the ladies, you're going to want to pop a full head on this puppy. Definitely helps with the swindling. If you're, and that's the thing. We encourage our viewers to be out there swindling. Get your money's worth. Absolutely. Don't be I mean, taken. essentially, it'll pay for itself. This hair will be paying for itself. With all the swindling revenues. And more than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. MPB. So you want to be out there. It has more than five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And the whole thing with Keeps is it's cheaper. So there are two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both. Keeps offers simple, affordable, stress-free way to keep your hair. And you just have a convenient virtual doctor consultation. Medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. If you want to do the doctor's visit in the nude, I don't know if I necessarily recommend that, but they Good. don't. Yeah. That's the thing, right? You could have no bottoms on. And they could say, okay, we'll just take a look at your hair and you go up top or up bottom. <laughs> Carpet or the drapes? 24-7 <laughs> Karen support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Treatment starts at just 10 bucks a month and Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss, which is actually pretty effing cheap. Treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything you need delivered straight to your door. So... When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less, and if you're ready to take action like a man and swindle those women, go to keeps.com slash boyscast to receive your first month of treatment free if you're one of the dogs. That is keeps.com slash boyscast to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash boyscast. And next we're going to tell you about Freshly. So I've been on this because as you know, I'm not here to cook. I'm doing shit. Danny's probably more so in the kitchen, in the nude. Where's me? Businessman. Business. I'm, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business. I actually am. That's the thing. I actually am a businessman. So I sort of just pick the things. So basically it's pre-cooked meals, but they actually have good things. It's not just like frozen. Fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're, all, they're not frozen. And they have good ones that's actually high class. You could take a girl out, you could put, put, you could uh, buy these, and then you put it on the plate and act like you're some fancy chef. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, not you start making you a homemade dinner. Yeah, kind of yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're in the, the fucking kitchen, you're 
clanging <laughs> pots, and pots and pans and fucking maybe cut yourself a little bit just to show you're really slaving, burn yeah, your yeah. hand. And then you those, come out with the thing. Know, Ta-da! She goes, wow. So the meals are actually sick. And it, you know, if you don't want fast food, the meals are designed by nutritionists, cooks, chefs, then delivered fresh. Other meal deliveries need to be prepped and cooked, but freshly is ready to eat in three minutes. So no one wants to spend eight hours cooking ugh, after a rough day of me making deals, <laughs> business deals at the end of a long day. Takeout doesn't have to be your only option for an easy dinner. Whether it's just you or you got a family of rugrats, Freshly gives you the convenience, flavor, and nutrition. So I ordered the ch- I got the chicken teriyaki bowl and then the Indian spiced chickpea curry. How's that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been eating your cheese dreams. I've been eating like a cake. Sounds like Ryan's fucking that (laughs) cheese dream is all a big lie. (laughs) I'm not a cheese dream. Big cheese deception. (laughs) I'm not a cheese dreaming guy anymore because I have the the freshly coming in. (laughs) Delicious, chef-made, nutrient-packed meals delivered straight to your door, no cooking required, fresh and never frozen, ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Choose from 50 nutritionist-designed entrees like their classic steak peppercorn, multi-serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese or their new line of plant-based meals it's affordable and convenient new meals are added weekly so you're never stuck eating the same thing over and over stop stressing out about dinner right now freshly is offering our listeners 80 dollars off your first four orders when you go to freshly.com slash boys cast 80 American clam smackaroos. 80 smackaroons is pretty yeah, good. Eh? That's probably one of my biggest things about the podcast I like is because uh, I don't really try new things that often. Yeah. Whereas I've been now yeah. I've been on a lot of new things that have actually worked into my routine like Freshly. So that's 80 bucks off at Freshly.com slash boys cast. Now we'll get back into it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this is our body. Alex Byron sent us this. It's probably one of the funniest things I've ever been seen. Yeah. I've ever done seen. I actually, yeah. Uh, I, I'd like, because you, you just did one. I, I don't think you noticed. I did what? Uh, A microaggression? Yeah. We, so we got the encyclopedia of microaggressions. And it's I an organization it was, that yeah. has this pretty elaborate website. And they take submissions. And they have employees. And they'll, and then they, you know, obviously use this to go to workplaces and sort of hawk their bullshit. Yeah. Micropedia.org. Yeah. Which is are, what you would think. Yeah. <laughs> Just lots of pictures of Danny dude. Yeah. <laughs> It's low hanging fruit. Uh, <laughs> you go, Where are all the tiny dicks? I came, I came here for tiny dicks, <laughs> and then I'm being micro aggressive. But you said off the reservation. That's one of them. Oh, well, there is some of the parts of this. Um, so this micropedia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it there is a lot of stuff where you go. Some of this stuff. There's two types. One is where you go. Okay, this is nothing. And then the other ones, you go, yeah. I mean, that being that's an actual aggression. Like, who the fuck would say this at work? For sure. The, I, I, so I've, I've, I have to. We'll start have, with the gay one. I have a mea culpa. I have a mea culpa. What's a mea culpa? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna apologize. I have to come forward and because I have for one. aggressions. For you aggressions do. against you. We should do this because it's, it's a the class, workplace. We'll ask class ones based <laughs> one. <laughs> What's the class? Which is making fun of the cheese dreams. <laughs> what, what was the microaggression? The, it was just making fun of them, thinking that cheese dreams were not uh, valid. For Food type. Oh, does it say like making fun of foods of other Just class groups? It's every. It's making fun of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is they find what <laughs> category that falls into? Well, they have a yeah. They so they basically. So they I go, apologize for making fun of your cheese drinks. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. They go gay ones, race, class based disability. They put them in all these different categories, right? Yeah. So the first category is. By the way, good site. Like nice <laughs> u- user experience. Incredible very, site. Very well designed website. Oh my God. Whoever designed this site, it's probably the the, the most uh, smoothest inf- yeah, interface. It is really good site. Um, but yeah, so. The f- okay, we'll go with gay first and I'll list off some of my favorites. So, oh, you don't look trans. Mm-hmm. That would be, uh, you know, you implies a trans person looks a certain way. But they say that you shouldn't say that if someone comes in and they're trans and you go. Oh, you don't even look trans. Yeah. Which I don't think you would say. Um, so suggesting people should date because they're both gay, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Like so if there's two gay guys in the office, you go, you guys ever considered bumming? Yeah. You know what I mean? You go, you, you guys consider- should. Hey, oh, you guys, excuse me. You guys should both bum each other. Yeah. So when are you really going to transition? 
So this is where it starts to get. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucking. Sounds like you're like piece of shit dad. Like a lot of these are like, I don't know. I guess it's. Well, what favorite. they mean is, yeah. So some basically you have a trans person in the office and they go, oh, I'm trans. And you go, but when are you actually going to. I mean, it sounds like they took the term backhanded comment and they just made a science you know scientific term for it because that's all these are yeah. just back would you ever say that to a trans person though but when are you actually gonna you know, you know between me when and are you, you gonna go to like with that yeah, doot, 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 doot. <laughs> and then a goo, goo. Uh, ooh, uh. yeah what i, I mean when's that happening i mean listen yes you're trans but when are you gonna ever you know yeah. oh, bo, 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 bo. i saw adam's <laughs> apple five miles away shaving Come on. the beard <laughs> you know, but when are you actually gonna <laughs> chains out? <laughs> That's you blowing up the balloons to put in the bra. Oh, so I don't think I would say that to a trans person. I would never say that. <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> Someone sent me this. It was so Snapchat has their front page and they put some pretty wild stuff on there. Yeah, and it was. Uh, it was a basically a non-binary person who has a big beard, and then their whole thing was, you know, uh, basically how, how to deal with how your date reacts when they see your beard. Because <laughs> I guess in her, I mean, the first part would be like, I mean, maybe tell I them in advance. Oh no, just have the original, have the beard in the photos, probably. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> what I don't the, have the beard in the photos. Oh, you, what? <laughs> yeah, I guess I do have a beard now. You know what? I didn't think about it. I've had the beard for so long. I just. How would you feel if you showed up on a date with a girl and you had a beard? Should a beard and, should a, we go, and a penis? <laughs> but talk about a catfish, right? So essentially, you're saying just me and makeup shows up. And I go, oh. Yeah, that is funny though. You'd be like, ah, I was catfish. This I was on a date with some guy, and you know he was he was uh, had hair in the photo because he but he was just wearing a hat on. Then it turned out he was bald. You go, yeah, my date showed up with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> My female date. Yeah, I think I'm gonna win this round. Yeah, my female date showed up with a full, with a full, full hockey beard. coach goatee, <laughs> straight a soul patch, just like, but nothing else you could tell. Smoking yeah, on yeah, chick, smoking on, just, soul patch. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> it's like that trans woman who was on Doctor Phil. Mutton chops, just fucking the, mutton. the motor. The guy from Motorhead was his name again. Lemmy. Yeah, <laughs> the Lemmy mutton chops. <laughs> and she goes, "What? What's the big deal?" This <laughs> wall. Oh, I'm sorry. And you go, "Yeah, I can imagine your, uh, your heterosexual date not loving you showing up with the fucking." <laughs> no, sir. Um, no, no. You better she shows up with the uh, the Arabian, like the the Arab car guy zigzag. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, the zigzag chin strap. <laughs> a good one you go yeah i can't imagine they like that you go nah. so anyways going up to that person i go oh, you know when are you in fact when are you actually gonna zzz, oh, oh, you can oh, add oh. you can add micro you can add my no but i think I they have to that. approve them for yeah, them to yeah, make the cut sure. so one other gay one was uh assuming same sex couples are just friends so that's like uh some guy shows up with his date and you go hey is that your uh, buddy there when, <laughs> when so how long you and your uh buddy have been as uh, uh, roommates <laughs> right Roommates? That's, that's actually, by the way, that no joke happened to my family. Why? When my brother, when my brother came in the closet when he was like seventeen or eighteen or something, he had a boyfriend, and my dad did go. So will uh, your friend be staying over? <laughs> He really didn't know. <laughs> uh, no, he knew, but he just didn't know what to oh, call him. He didn't him. know what to call him. Yeah, yeah. He goes, "What's your uh, your buddy?" I mean, I can picture my parents saying that about a girl being like, "So, yeah, your, yeah, yeah. your friend gonna be staying with us?" But it's just funny within that well, scenario. In that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in that, yeah, the Canadian version being like, "So your uh, buddy, o- your buddy over there, you guys, <laughs> you guys." <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's a microaggression. If you ever assume that gay people aren't aren't doing it, yeah, there is one that honestly. I so found assuming the, they should do it's a microaggression. Assuming they aren't doing it's a microaggression. Everything's a microaggression. <laughs> if you don't do it, you might be a microaggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you think, if you see two gay dudes at the office and assume that they're bumming, you might be a yeah, microaggression. Might be a microaggression. If you see two guys that are bumming <laughs> and you assume that they might not be bumming. You might be your mind. The best one, which because obviously these are the wokest of the woke people who make this, not okay. these, but uh, under the religion tab. What's the okay? Well, let's skip to religion. What they have using the word Nazi as an adjective. 
I'm like, that's your whole thing. I, I thought that was interesting. That was too. a weird one that that passed the test. Well, I, I'll tell you why because they had a little Jewish flair in here. There was a lot of Jewish. Well, ones. there are a few Jewish things, but I'm like, you have every person who comes to this website goes next to Twitter and calls everybody on Twitter a Nazi. It, very weird, right? Yeah, that was the one that I didn't. Uh, I agree with you. That, that didn't was pass strange. The, the, the test. Oh, so here. in religion, they said, uh, assuming your marriage is going to be arranged, they said that was a microaggression. Yeah. I assume marriage is going <clears> to <throat> be deranged because of women. <laughs> <laughs> women are crazy. You know, it's funny. I looked into this and we were doing... Uh, at Giannis's podcast, I actually looked up the stats, and it was something like seventy-five percent of um, uh, Indian marriages are still arranged. Yes, someone I think in the so comments it's said it was fairly even more. reasonable. Yeah, yeah. So it's a fairly reasonable assumption. Yeah, absolutely. So that, yeah, I yeah, don't it's know. High. Yeah, it's a. It's actually not that crazy. And then they said exoticism. So assuming someone is unusual, that's my favorite thing because it is very. They go, like for example, you say an Orthodox Jew with the tassels. Like being like, oh, that's you know interesting or whatever. Like, go, what? wow, why? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Assuming any, you go assuming something that very few people at the workplace do is somehow exotic. Yeah, yeah. it's like you show up to work and you have like that plate in your lip. <laughs> and I go, oh, <laughs> that's crazy. Where, 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 where is that from? You're what the like, fuck? America? I'm from Detroit. <laughs> that's your fucking problem. Oh, this is just exotic to you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the rings on the neck. <laughs> yeah, the super long neck. <laughs> With the fucking no, yeah, no, plate in the nothing's lip? weird ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then plate in the lip, the rings in the neck, <laughs> boobs out, <laughs> just full out, topless, neck, full out, old school. Two neck. kids just nursing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, interesting. What's, what is weird about this? <laughs> and you go, oh, this is somehow strange to you, huh? So I don't like that. Any assuming anything's a, a, a different from ordinary. Yeah. Okay. I will say they just did a racism. By the way, I found one. Okay, we'll do a race racism. next. No, but I found a racism in their thing. What did they do? So, oh, no, they, no, a lot of them do their own things. I agree. Yeah. Well, because so here's one: assumed criminality is a microaggression, mm -hmm. but they give them tags. And then the tags, so it says assumed criminality, assuming that a person is dangerous. Yeah, if you want to or, pull up the site, you can come talk along with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So assuming that a person is dangerous or a criminal, this is often based on their micropedia race. Dot, the micropedia dot org. The micropedia dot org. And it says this is often based on their race and associated racial stereotypes. And then the tags it has for this one are race. Why would that race, be a race tag? Ethnicity, et indigenous, and religion. So they just specifically threw in a specific race. Mm. They go, okay, we're going to throw in indigenous and then just all races. They go, well, that was unnecessary. That could have right. gone under the race tag. Yeah, exactly. Well, the race one, the they basically started with using Nazi, like grammar Nazi, for example. Yep. And that's what you were having a problem with. With I think what they, if I was to say, to sum up what the issue is, they go, that term is reserved for white men. Yeah. Not people that are bad with grammar. No. <laughs> She's so aggressive, directed at uh, a racial women who are confident. So basically, no woman's ever wrong, like if her emotions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... You know, if a girl's yelling and screaming and flipping the table and you go a bit much, they go, what? <laughs> so, no, so basically, no woman's action or emotion is ever over the top. It's always just the right amount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't act black. Uh, so saying someone doesn't act black. So this is an interesting one that I had a pretty good discrepancy with. Okay. Tell me if you think this is holding up logically. Okay. I thought, okay. So doesn't this conflict each other? Because if you said to someone, you know, and this is, I've heard before, if you tell, for example, a black guy and you go, or a woman or whatever, and you go, uh, she doesn't act black. They're yeah. there. They would say that's crazy, right? Like, oh, what is black? You know, but if a white guy was like, yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My And they would go, why are you trying to act black? And would you not be, I thought there wasn't a acting black. That is a good point. Because I, I think wasn't they, that wouldn't that be the whole thing? Is if someone says you go, how? What do you mean? I'm acting a race. I mean, the truth is, I would say everyone knows, you know, what the cultures is. Like if someone goes, yo, what's up, SA? You know, you'd go if I acted that. But then if you saw a Latino guy that was, hello, and then you go, oh, uh, he doesn't act uh, Latino, and then they would go, what do you mean he doesn't act Latino? Well, I think the problem is they say that the, they assume that presumes that the baseline for that race is the you know what's considered, I guess, not the best of you know they're they're not taking but the, you're just saying the terminology though no no with the terminology no I agree with what you're saying that is uh, 
Okay. Because wouldn't they say, hey, if you were talking, if you were doing a bunch of like, you know, uh, black slang, they would say, hey, you're stealing their thing, right? Yes. And you, and, but if then if they go, someone who doesn't do that, and they go, well, you're not acting that uh, black, they would, would you not say, <clears throat> well, which is it? Is well, it, I guess you could. Do we, do yeah, they act I, I guess you could don't? both say that you're stealing their thing if you're stealing their thing, but then if you're not, if you're not that. And you're black. It still don't say that. I guess. I guess maybe you would say that if there's a Venn diagram, they were like, "Well, blackness is everything, but this is a part of it." So you're still trying to act black, but everything else is black too. So yeah, exactly. I guess the only. Exactly. I see that's the only way they could sort of justify. Like, it or like nobody sounds like Obama, and you know, there's some successful CEO, and they go, "Why are you trying to act black?" Well, I don't or, think. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's, it doesn't go the other way. That's why goes, they're trying. It to only say goes it. the negative way. Well, no, but you're you're making it negative. Well, like, that's I don't. It's a microaggression. Sure, I know and they are, but I don't think that using slang is positive or no, negative. No, no, it's just I agree. like it, if someone comes up and, you know, fucking dress a certain way, I don't know if that's positive or negative. It just kind of is. Well, they I, I guess when they like say if someone's a someone, rapper, you don't necessarily negative or positive. No, no, no. I think what the is, you know, if someone is a black person doesn't speak a bonics and you go, "Oh, you don't even talk like a black person." And you go, "That's not what all black people talk like." Well, yeah. You're ascribing the most negative of Traits, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's where they're going. But you are right also that with the acting black with the white thing when they say negative. Well, this is another one they said with the Jewish thing. They go, you have a Jewish nose is a microaggression. I mean, that sounds like a macro aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> like, what am I, at a fucking comedy show? <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's literally like front front row of a comedy show. Some comic goes, look at his fucking Jewish nose. <laughs> yeah, like, yes, you're right. If you were in the workplace and you go, oh, are you Jewish? And you go, Oh, interesting. Because you have a Jewish nose. Yeah. Like everyone knows that's not a compliment. No, and that also <laughs> right? is a thing. Yeah, but like, yeah, that they they kind of mix up microaggressions and actual aggression. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's not micro. That's <laughs> it's not, not a microaggression. It's not a. It's not like hey, uh, can you smell better? Right, because you're Jewish. And you go, what are you getting? It's at? like oh, you drink. You know, you, yeah, you fucking drink like an Irish person. Like yeah. you know, obviously that's uh, fucking <laughs> uh, meant to be negative. They go, um, uh, clutching your bag when a racialized person approaches, which is pretty aggressive thing to do at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like in your, like, your cubicle and just like you're like, someone walks by, you just grab your bag. No, it's like the fucking like old woman, like Latino janitors walking by and all these like middle-aged white women are grabbing their purses <laughs> as she walks by. You go, yeah, that seems like a lot. You're in, a, you're in a meeting. It's just like a fucking thirty year old like black guy at a marketing company, and then the lady like moves her purse <laughs> to the other side. You go, yeah, that'd yeah, be a yeah. lot. That's <laughs> like very deliberately too. It's not even hiding it. I guess so. You're right. That would that would that would seem like a microaggression. Be a I guess on the side of the road, I, I think the only thing you could do here's the problem though, because you go, you shouldn't uh, you know walk across the street or clutch your bag if you. But you go if you're a woman. And you're walking like alone and someone's, you might cross the street for just men, period. Yeah. And you go, which is you, a microaggression. Yeah. But you go, you have to not do it for racialized ones. You can all, you know what I mean? You go. I was actually thinking because there has been a slew of a uh, crime in, in New York, right? Like there's been a lot of, and it's mostly women getting targeted, especially on the subways and stuff. Okay. And there are going to be some women who kind of out of protection do something that then will people will be like that's racist because the person that they did that to was racialized i think so yeah and then mm. they go to class base you're so lucky you don't have to pay taxes you're indigenous so that fuck says that oh oh because of indigenous and, no because the well that was one of those ones where i guess they're i, I just don't understand that one because you know we're, we're in canada basically i think this is like this in america oh that is tagged as indigenous they tag them as a as, couple tags. hey you're so poor that you don't have to pay i didn't take t take that as like the canada no tax thing well they had the indigenous but they tag. had the they just put the indigenous tag on everything on this website <laughs> you're right because it is that would be a little rude that that's a very condescending phrase to go to someone that's like only makes 20 grand a year and be like dude you're i wish i would pay your that's taxes that's how i interpreted that <clears throat> i thought it was but because I guess they're saying if you're indigenous oh, but they you are saying pay taxes it, yeah and the definition they say and to me that it's one of those things where they go well but we have friends oh no it is a canadian thing specifically we have friends that don't they have the card that they don't have to pay taxes yeah. and you go it's objectively sick yeah for sure you go for us to be like oh i wish i, I, mean, I wish i, I have friends who that rules. i have one friend who has the card 
who has, you know, you go to their house and they have a dream catcher and that's the extent of how indigenous they are. Yeah. You know, like they're not like, it's not their identity at all. They just happen to pass the test. And you don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to pay taxes. And you're like, yeah. If you, have you ever said like that's sick that you don't have to pay taxes? Probably. Well, you should call them and apologize. To her. (laughs) Her. And I will do no such thing. So the myth of meritocracy is if you ever say that anyone, uh, <laughs> myth of meritocracy is funny. They said the belief that hard work is the only thing that people need for success. Yeah. So yes, obviously there's more than just the hard work. There's lots more to it. But Unless you're a golfer or a fucking basketball player. What do you mean? Well, the myth of meritocracy. I mean, most sports are generally meritocracies. Yeah, but you could also say... Unless, unless you say that your athletic ability... No, but are, you could also say... Yeah, you could say athletic ability. You could say, you know, brain power or something like that. Yeah. You know? But the idea that there's no correlation to hard work... Anyone who's, anyone who's managed any amount of people would say that, yeah, I mean, the people that work harder, I'm more likely to promote. I mean, that's pretty... Yeah, well... Their ability to work hard is a construct of the patriarchy. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where you go, nothing's anything. But anyone who has ever sort of worked in any sort of situation, I mean, you know, anything you've ever been in in your life, you go, the people that are doing the best and the people that are doing the worst. And you go, if you were to do a graph of how hard they work, we go, it would not surprise you. Uh, Of course. I mean, dude, there's a lot of professional athletes who aren't the most talented, who are you know, as good as they are because of just hard work. Like they're, you know, they can't jump the highest. Like they, they who would be an example. I mean, I, I'm not talking about like superstars. Those okay. guys generally, but you're are. saying they were, they I mean, were Steph pretty Curry, good. I was thinking Steph Curry for a second. I mean, his father was an NBA player, so he obviously has had opportunities, but he's not the craziest athlete by any stretch of the imagination. And he is just a crazy hard worker. I don't know. Right. Why. But well, he does have obviously the genetics of a professional basketball player. So I don't, and this is another one. I don't know how you could do it. I could never give up my baby. So, <laughs> that's a fucking. Who is saying that? <laughs> that one's funny. So someone gives their baby up for adoption and then they come back to the office. And you... <laughs> Some of these are just like what you would see on TV as like a, a bitchy woman. Yeah, it's like a PSA or something. It's not. I don't know how you'd ever give up your baby. The, the, like that. One of my favorite ones was under. Um... Which this is a crazy one was uh, under gender, which was putting female we, before title anything. Uh, go, oh, she's a female gender. Oh, <laughs> um, this you're the female CEO. So putting the they said putting a female and before no the best was, yeah yeah I didn't that was a good one but also uh, she's the female vice president. <laughs> She must be on her period. <laughs> this comment like, reinforces the stereotype that women are irrational and emotional. They don't like you saying they're on their period. And there's nothing that always gets me more than the ref uh, in a in a game when the ref's doing bad in uh, hockey. You go, "Hey ref, you on your period? You, uh, hey ref, you pregnant? Because you just missed three periods." <laughs> So disability, they go, they don't like when you go, you're so articulate. So uh, it's funny uh, thinking that the disability, they mean the wheelchair. <laughs> the guy gives a speech and they go, it's so crazy that you're so articulate. The age one was a reach too. What was age? Okay, age. boomer. They don't like, okay, yeah, yeah they're trying to say that okay, boomer is a micro. Dude, one of them is straight up. They needed the age tab and they had they're nothing. They like the age tab. Dude, do you even know okay, what Snapchat grandma. or TikTok is? That's a microaggression, yeah. Every old person would be like, first off, your microaggressions are your loser for even having this. Like anybody who you would be saying that to would be like, what? And then also they're like, no. Yeah, then you'd be 65. right. 65. Why would I know what Snapchat or TikTok is? Well, you just microaggressed against this old person. You look great for your age is a microaggression. It seems like this person is just all, a list of mean things that someone said to them. This but, person is but Steve, it's not. It's, Steve it's, Buscemi and uh, Billy Madison. <laughs> Just the most aggrieved person <laughs> with the list of all the things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they don't like inspiration porn, which just reduces them to their disability. So they they don't like it when you say anything to disabled people, basically. <laughs> they, which we know dis, a, a decent amount of disabled people. And, you know, in comedy and this and that. I mean, yeah. I'm probably sure you know your own, you have your own squad and I have my own squad. Yeah, of course. We're not, <laughs> whatever, we're college, whatever. Same. But they're... Anyone that I know, it's like, yeah, it's not what they're saying where they go handle with extreme care. No. Most people that I know that have like, you know, any sort of disability are like, yeah, you can probably just treat me the same. Yeah, I prefer other if you treat me like everybody else. Yeah, I'd probably just rather be treated like a preferred. human being. Yeah. They said they're acting crazy. 
that puts a stigma on mental illness. So never, no matter what, if a girl, no matter how much a girl's yelling, she's not being uh, aggressive. And no, she's, she's not just being testing crazy. out those vocal cords. <laughs> That's what she's doing. Go stop testing out the vocal cords. Being, you don't say they're acting crazy. I can't believe you are married. So they say, uh, if you go up to someone that's for in a wheelchair and be like, holy shit, I can't believe you actually found someone to lock down. I, which I yeah. don't think anyone would ever say no, to I, a disabled I, person. Yeah. Imagine the guy comes in, he's got like a walker and stuff and you go, you're married? <laughs> what? Who would fuck you? <laughs> oh, did I say that? I can't imagine someone would say that. How hard do you think it is to sneak uh, microaggressions onto the site? We should try to get, we should one get in some there. in there. Saying my nipples are weird. <laughs> some very specific thing. What's the one that they need the most for? That's Telling the, men that that's they the talk one too that... much. Tone policing, instead of listening to them, you focus on emotion. So again, a lot of their things are, there's no level of freaking out that's ever warranted of any comment. Here's one for, how about one for religion I'll submit. It's uh, uh, assuming that someone who's lending you money is uh, lending it to you at a super high interest rate just because they're Jewish. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Just because I'm Jewish doesn't mean I'm usurious. Yeah, yeah. Even though I wanted 22 percent return <laughs> on this money that I lent you for a beer. <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's anti-Semitic to say that I I I uh, wanted a 27 percent return <laughs> <laughs> monthly interest rate. Right? Yeah, monthly. Sorry. On the Why would you think that? On the five bucks that I lent to my girlfriend, that's a <laughs> microaggression seeming shocked at the ability of anyone with a disability describing yourself as OCD when you're not they don't like no so those are the main ones but I don't know I've just oh there's yeah and then they go religion and then okay age but it does seem like essentially you know what you know like struggle sessions and stuff like that it's almost like these things are you go everyone write down a meme comment that everyone says and we'll put it in the fire and watch it burn yeah, yeah. it's kind of like you know, it's a, it's a therapeutic thing for them where they can write down a mean thing that someone said to them and put it on their site. And then now it's on the site and then they can this sort of feels though, go. but the end game is, the is whoever's, you know, compiling this. And then once they get the whole thing, then they get to go to workplaces and they get hired. This is a grift of all of it's a grift. But this is, this goes, you know, they're And to be honest, this place is probably doing okay with their grift because of the sleekness of this site. <laughs> it's a damn good site. Site's man. incredible. Yeah. I don't know why you'd want to sign up. It says sign up, but I'm like, sign up for what? I think sign up for they give you a bump every time there's a new microaggression. Yeah. They go, good news, we added a new mean comment. I'm following them on Twitter, the Micropedia. They only have 89 <laughs> followers. Yo, go blow up the mic. Go give them a follow. 89 followers. They deserve, <laughs> honestly, for how good this website is, they deserve more followers than 89. The Micropedia. <laughs> ah, shit. Well, guys. We're going to fucking cruise on over to the Patreon. We're going to talk about phantom honking. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Fart. Although they only have one There's a tweet. fart subreddit. <laughs> they like being farted on and stuff like that. Yeah, that one was kind of pretty much. And there's an Indian Tinder swindler. There's a lot of different things. We're going to go over the fucking the Patreon The Indian Tinder week. swindler. I call them the heart Tinder swindler. <laughs> heart Tinder swindler. Heart no, heart Tinder. Because I actually went and was Googling all the names, uh, Indian that's names that stuff. have Tinder in them. Nah, it's not bad. Hard Tinder Swindler. Hard and that's a, that is an Indian name, Hard Tinder Swindler. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. March 7th, come out to my special. Or come don't out come to out it. to my special. Watch free YouTube.com slash Ryan Long Comedy. And March 10th, there's still tickets available for my special. Come to Danny's taping. show. I'm going to come hang out there too. And if there's anything that you could do, it's just tell a friend to fucking check out the special. I think this is probably the biggest thing that I've done since I moved here. Hell so yeah. It's spread be, the word around. It's going to be glorious. Taken over. And, you know, check us out on the Patreon slash the boys cast and come to Danny's show and watch the special and come to Danny's show. Yes. Peace. Peace.